Please, go ahead. Um, so the Bureau of Industry and Security has added 29 Russian uh, persons, that includes companies, to the sanctions list. And uh, it says, uh, quote, the BIS IS is taking this action to ensure the efficacy of existing sanctions on the Russian Federation for violating international law and fueling uh, the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Uh, end of quote. Uh, what does Russia do in Ukraine right now that warrants an update of sanctions? Um, I, I'm uh, sorry, you said you mentioned who was it behind the upgrade in sanctions? I apologize. I missed the first part the of your Bureau question. Bureau of Industry and Security. Bureau of Industry and Security here in the United States? Yes. Okay. Oh, right, the Commerce Department. I, I apologize. I just didn't. Um, I, I, I believe, and I, I, may, uh, I may be wrong, but I believe this is in line with ongoing sanctions uh, strengthening and what we talked about a couple weeks ago here, which is, you know, when we're constantly um, uh, freshening our sanctions and our sanctions are in place because of uh, Russia's uh, behavior support for the separatists, ongoing support for the separatists in eastern Ukraine. Uh, and we want to keep those sanctions as current as possible. Uh, in any kind of sanctions regime, there's obviously uh, workarounds uh, uh, that develop over time. So we constantly look at those and uh, ways to strengthen them and close those kind of workarounds in order to keep them uh, both uh, 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 knitted up with uh, EU sanctions uh, as well as Canadian sanctions, but also to uh, make sure that they're airtight, for lack of a better term. I, as I understand from what you said, you know, they're not indefinite, they're conditional, right? They are conditional. Uh, what, yeah. what violations by Russia at this point right now warrant such such tightening, strengthening of the sanctions? Uh, again, uh, it, it, uh, if, again, if we're talking about Ukraine, specific yeah, what, to Eastern Ukraine, it, I mean, we've Russia seen, right what we've now, seen is, exactly. sorry, I mean, um, we've seen, um, um, frankly, uh, writ large, uh, a lack of serious effort to comply with any of the commitments uh, uh, that Russia and the separatists have made regarding Minsk. Um, and we've seen ongoing violations of the ceasefire. And I know we've been back and forth on that or who's to blame for that. We believe the preponderance of those ceasefire violations are on the part of uh, separatist forces, again, supplied uh, and uh, and also uh, helped by uh, Russian uh, military. Can you give some specifics? Exactly what violations? What ceasefire? Why, how is Russia? Involved? Well, I mean, I, again, I mean, I can. You know, we've got, uh, you know, uh, many examples. Uh, obviously, I'd refer you to the OSCE. Uh, their monitors are on the ground, uh, and uh, their uh, but mandate you're or their a their that sorry Russia their. Is but their, sorry, that. let me so finish. Their decide? mission is to uh, look at uh, and uh, survey uh, all of the uh, uh, disputed territory, uh, but also to monitor the ceasefire, which is an essential part of the Minsk uh, commitments. Uh, we've seen a new ceasefire come into effect today. Uh, uh, we hope that that uh, will bear fruit uh, and solidify. Uh, we've seen uh, relative calm today, but, um, you know, I think we've uh, uh, we've continued to see violations uh, on the part of uh, Russia and a part of the separatists. Um, and can't name to them, that regard, right? sure, can I can. Yes. Um, if you want to wait while I get to it, I'm happy to give you a uh, chapter and verse. Um, I mean, first of all, the larger picture. There would be no conflict in eastern Ukraine if Russia were not providing tanks, armored vehicles, heavy artillery, military personnel to the separatists. I think we all understand that. We've, uh, we've uh, made that very clear uh, over many months, uh, including showing uh, satellite imagery that shows uh, Russian troops, command and control on the ground in eastern Ukraine. Do you, do you uh, have they've the seized... recent, very recent images? Sure, we do. Um, I, I don't have them in front of me. Um, but, uh, you know, we've seen continue uh, destabilizing actions on the part of Russia in eastern Ukraine. Um, we have now have this ceasefire in place, uh, but we remain concerned about further ceasefire uh, activities. But, yeah, but please. There, no, 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 no specifics yet. What, what exactly, what, what violations do you, do you, do you 
do you ha have any in front of you? Because you know, by many accounts, this has been the calmest, um, I can say, a week for sure, and probably the whole year. That's that's and not true. I mean, we've seen repeatedly uh, within the past months, uh, uh, Russian uh, separatist forces have launched uh, dozens of attacks across the line of control, killing more than a dozen Ukrainian soldiers, uh, injuring dozens of others. Uh, you know, I was very clear. There is a new uh, ceasefire initiative uh, set in place today, uh, frankly, on the part of the Ukrainian government. We hope that holds. Uh, uh, we're cautiously optimistic, uh, but we haven't, you know, we, we have, as we've seen in the past, uh, these uh, ceasefire violations continue, and the vast majority of them are on the part of the separatists. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you have a question? I, well, I have a question. 